in our schools, in our culture, even in the symbols of evolution, the symbols of Jesus. Look around. Look at all these white faces here. Right? Everybody know Bible, no white people. There were no white people in the Bible. Zero. And yet, look at the meticulous effort, the artists that they commissioned to create this image to destroy the black past. Right? So it's crazy to me because this idea of rena Renaissance art is a war against the black past. Because what they did in the Crusades is they killed all the, all the black people in Europe. Got the Moors, got the Arabs, Ottoman Empire out of Europe. And then they ran through these churches and repainted all this stuff. It wasn't new art. The art was there, and it was black. And they rewrote our past away from us. So that Cesar Borgia is Jesus, instead of the black man he was. And so to me, this run communicates that so well, that when you tell people what their past is, you define their present. And when they remember, you can't control it. And then the justice, and he brings this again. Oh, man, John says so much about the future of black leadership. And in Jaka versus T'Challa, right? So, who was the leader of the intergalactic empire of Wakanda? Oh, Wakanda is Ender Jaka. So, his energy is what ultimately led to this conquest. And that's that toxic masculinity that you wrong me, white folks, so I'm killing everybody, I'm controlling everything, and ain't, no, ain't nobody ever gonna test me. You mess with me, you get dealt with. That energy led to this, and yet T'Challa is coming up from the bottom to balance it out, right? And to reconcile this thing that's a part of us when we go through pain, right? When white supremacy hurts us, when we don't know our past, when our parents are murdered and taken away from us. And so I love the beauty of how Ndidaka aligns with the symbiote, right? This thing that empowers evil, that, that brings out the worst of you and empowers you, and is constantly battling with this massive force, and then you got these little maroons picking their spots. Hmm. And their number one goal is to get people's memory back. The whole time they're like, yo, if we get people's memories back, it's over, because they're not that powerful. Their power is in their ability to tell us who we are. Once they can't tell us who we are, it's over. So even though they're a small force, they know if they can, un they can unlock the rest of the people, it's over. So that balance is crazy. And then T'Challa's leadership of faith. So if you look at it, in Baku and all the other military folks, they're very short-sighted. They're like, this battle, this moment, save these people. And when T'Challa starts coming in his own, he's like, look, now, nah, bro, I got some special stuff here. Y'all need to wait. Y'all need to hold up. Y'all need to let Bast come down through me and act upon these situations in ways that you might not understand. And I think that play is beautiful, because in Baku's like, I've been running this shit, I've been running this game. Like, I've survived, I've made progress, I've freed you. And yet, is able to get him to trust and to show, look, there's another level of consciousness here. We need to bring in the gods. We need to open ourselves up to bring in the power of the universe that's coming through us. And at first, Mbaku was like, you crazy, <laughs> you know? But then he sees him come up with that purple spear and lay everybody down, he's like, okay. You know, let's run with this. But again, that leadership of faith and trust in the future. T'Challa knows. He's like, Bass with me. My whole team back in 2,000 years ago with me. Everybody <laughs> with me. I don't care what's in front of me. There is a future, and I know it. Therefore, I'm drawing myself to it, and it don't matter what else is in front of me. So that balance between Ndidaka and T'Challa over like what black leadership looks like, so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and then... And I already talked about resistance, rebellion, and guerrilla warfare, right? That we have always been a people who had to resist from within larger structures, pick our spots, and teach us about ourselves. Even what Dave was just saying. People had to be taught about their rights and their history in order to vote. Um, African concept of space and time. There are multiple times when T'Challa communicates with Storm, with Shuri, with the existing Wakanda, the Wakanda that we know. And there's always a communication going on between the people of Wakanda Prime 2,000 years ago saying, yo, T'Challa, we want you back. And eventually, those people come into the play, they bring their power, they bring their energy, but there's this idea that time is not linear, right? 
and that when we're outside of this experience, <clears throat> we can go anywhere, talk to anybody, as long as we can feel it, as long as we know that there's a spiritual connection. And nature, in the Shura, there's a connection with Ruin, where the Shura <laughs> tries to tap into this tree of knowledge and ends up becoming Ruin. And this idea that time, space, all these things, there are places where they all intersect and that they that can become through. And Africans and almost all indigenous people have never thought of time as many as one event after another. That's a white supremacist concept that has distorted how we all perceive reality. And I appreciate Afrofuturism in general in this particular conscious way of weaving all these timelines together so we see time isn't what we think. Um, and then, yeah, I think internalized oppression. So there's a scene where, you know, T'Challa is uh, coming up, and this dude, Daoud, is like, yo, I run a yard here. You know what I mean? And he's like, yo, bro, we all slaves. Why, why would you, why would we whoop there? Why, why are you whooping my ass? You know, and he don't want to do it, but he handles it. In the docket, constantly in this conversation, in his mind, how do I stay in control? How do I benefit, right? But not thinking about his people and the slavery it takes to maintain his balance. <clears throat> and then in the T'Challa and Jadaka, there's also this black nationalism versus pan-Africanism. Uh, how many here people know what black nationalism is? Anybody want to take a stab at saying what that is? All right, so black nationalism is black everything, but at the price that everybody else pays. And so you're going to join us, and we're going to do to them what we did. And no matter what, it's black over everything. And if you're a black person and you don't agree, then you can go down too. <laughs> like, you, it's militant. You have to fall in line. And you have to do it how we say, when we say. And I can test your level of blackness depending on how you think, <clears throat> how you act, and how you move. And uh, part of it, it comes from self-defense and like, we have to do this, this is a reaction, but it gets to a place, especially if it's in a place where it's winning, where, it, where it's very toxic. You know what I'm saying? And people can't beat them real so they can't come up. And so if you happen to be a woman, your voice ain't being heard. If you happen to be in the LGBTQ community, your voice is not being heard. You know what I'm saying? If you happen to uh, sympathize you know what I'm saying? With somebody that is not of your race, you can't be down with. You know what I'm saying? That's not, oh, you got, you fell in love with a, with an Asian girl? Nah, you're done. You, you, you cut off from us. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's very in that way. It's more of like, we taking over by any means necessary, and you either you get down or lay down. Get down or lay down. That's how it is. Yeah, so Ed the doctor and the whole thing, he is so focused on Kinda of, that he colonized five other galaxies. And all those people are mining and working for Wakanda. So the black nation Wakanda is more important than everything else. Pan-Africanism is more this idea that we all have roots in Africa and that the pan, the, all of the Africans are one nation and they may still have nations within those nations. But the most important thing is to support all Africans around the globe Nation building is a part of it, but no African nation can be more important than another. And there was, people please read this amazing Pan African Revolution from 1950 to 1970. 30 countries liberated themselves. Now, they eventually, uh, white folks came back in and, and took it and, and are still uh, manipulating um, you know, our siblings in, in Africa. Um, and, and so much of what the Black Panther is to me is two Jewish dudes, Stanley and Jack Kirby watching that Pan-African Revolution, watching Patrice Lumumba and Thomas Nkara and all these people build this like powerful black dignity and reflecting it back on the page. Again, through a white perspective, but really reflecting like, yo, black people are taking back their power in America and across the globe together. And so to me, you know, ultimately the story starts with black nationalism and T'Challa is able to unify that black nationalist narrative into a broader one and create this kind of holistic space of the real future of Wakanda that we all want to believe in. So there's a whole lot of political undertones in the Black Panther 
And I just want to show a couple images. Um, so this is Newey P. Newton. Um, and if you look, and, I, and you'll see it in the next picture, but look at the spear that he's holding. The spear, he's holding the rifle in an African wicker chair, right? And the Black Panther has kind of used this imagery over and over and over again to kind of show the, the king of Wakanda sitting on this rock. <clears throat> and to me, you know, there's so many ways that ta Coates weave the history of the Black Panthers and the history of Black liberation in America and into these stories that they wanted to. And then if you look at this picture here of the planes, um, it mirrors war propaganda, right? So during the World War II, Korean War, uh, some of y'all, and Vietnam, there was all the kinds of propaganda of American planes behind them, bald eagles. And I love the way that they took Bath and the Panther and kind of replaced it, replaced the eagle with the Panther, you know, replaced the technology. And then you have the RBG, um, red, black, and green in, in the Wakanda flag. And it, just, it just mirrors this like image of imperialism and dominance of America, but puts this, this new layer on it. And then if you look at this middle picture, this is the Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars cover, right? And he's got this spear that is modeled after the spear he was using to show. And that's the weapon that he uses to, to free his people. And every single every single so episode of um, comic starts off with an introduction, right? So these four scenes where the star system, the planet dies, the throne world, and then you see this like military march, this military exodus. And so all of this imagery is very like rich with political undertones, and the whole thing was written just really powerfully to pull out, again, not just politics in general, but politics in a way that you can map to the future, you can feel that you're experiencing now, and that you can see comes from the past and the history of Maroons and uh, of Black liberation itself. So that is the political context of the Woo! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we're going to put uh, the cash app uh, in the chat. <laughs> uh, and uh, woo, this this information is so vital. Uh, before I go and start uh, diving into things I want to say, I want to acknowledge the, the chat. And uh, my man Miles, you know what I'm saying? He's dropping that knowledge. He's like, yo, we got Luke Cage and Misty Knight, you know what I'm saying, showing us. Examples of strong black people that are not only in comic books, but now they're on Netflix, they're on uh, uh, Disney Channel. Misty Knight, is that what kind of is it? Nah, Luke Cage. She's Luke Cage. A, oh, she's the detective in yep. she's yeah, detective yeah. Luke Cage. Yeah. So, uh, so in Luke Cage, so that's the net, Netflix, you know what I'm saying? So, shout out to uh, my Adam <laughs> and then Jasmine. She <laughs> says, Okay, John. I don't know how you sound, Jasmine, but okay, John, <laughs> dropping that knowledge. That's James. We see you. That was James. Oh, James, my bad. <laughs> okay, John, dropping that knowledge. We see you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Black Panther forever. We'll get him forever. You know what I'm saying? Turn the bass up. Turn the bass up. Turn the bass down. All right, so we can get into this. We can uh, talk. I can see myself. I see myself. We can, uh, we here at Wakanda Alliance, we're, um, we're obviously uh, passionate for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? I'm uh, an educator, I work in an after school program. Uh, John is a community organizer, national of uh, People's Action. Uh, Ace is an uh, artist, a uh, business owner. He teaches Capilla in my after school program. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's doing a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, Influencer Richie teaches people at uh, Just Literacy Buffalo, a writer, you know what I'm saying? Uh, DQ is a networker, a connector, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're passionate about these things. You know, we talk about it, but right now, we want to give you an opportunity, especially for our, you know, our kids that's been with us for, for over a year or whatnot, or third this year. Uh, what does the Black Panther series mean to you? And then also, I'm looking at uh, 
put in my laptop. Uh, Miles and Lindsay, this is your opportunity where you guys can share. I know earlier you were talking about the world of Wakanda was amazing. So uh, does anybody want to uh, take the mic first and say we have what they thought? Huh? We have to unmute them so they can. Oh, yeah, we, oh, we have to unmute them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so let's change the settings. Oh, okay, we change the settings. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, Miles, do you want to start? Um, I just mom got me this company. My thought would be awesome. She got for me four of um, meeting, and it was a really incredible story, and I love how it feeds in what you've all been talking about, and just how we can focus on the people. <laughs> So awesome. <laughs> just like you can really see it. And um I I kind of like how she came to mom on the lows. Um when she's talking about she thought it would be living death, which is something. Um the reverse that Oh right. Um and uh Bast is actually from uh, Egyptian mythology, goddess of Bast. There you go. Yeah. And um, I really like the mythology. Nice. Cool. Oh wow! Yeah, give it up. Give it up for Mario. Yeah. Man, my man said he said Bast guy comes from uh, Egyptian mythology. Yo, big up to you. Like this is a virtual. This is a virtual uh, fist pump right there <laughs> for you, Miles. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a, yeah, I see you. I see you, Miles and Miles doing a fist pump. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so Bass is based off of uh, Egyptian mythology, and that's not something that we learn uh, a lot about. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it gives us an opportunity to explore the, the different ways, and also like their relationship with Bass is different, kind of like, uh, so I'm Christian, I grew up in a church, you know what I'm saying? And so our relationship is is different. It's more, um, you know what I'm saying, like we're bowing down and we're defeating everything. And theirs is a uh, more of a relationship. It's more of a relationship. And um, you actually see uh, uh, Bass actually lose power you know, and then she's like, yo, I need, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can help you, you need to help me. Like, if we do this, you know what I'm saying? And you have that faith, you know what I'm saying? Because their ship could have got, uh, their ship could have been uh, blown up while they were trying to get the child's memory back. And so within it, it changed the whole momentum of the war. Like John was saying, when the child got his memory back, then uh, it was over. So Maya, thank you so much. Uh, for sharing, we definitely want to come back and ask you a few questions, but we want to get comments from uh, some people that's here in person. It's just really cool to see how they do through stuff, and like, it's really interesting. Go, go, go. We get a snap, so we definitely, we definitely don't learn about this stuff. Uh, so real quick, I was as a mentor, um, I teach him about community stuff and politics and stuff, and he's like, why don't you go blame the county? The county is doing it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if you are a snack, food stand, thing like that, that's from my county. And it's not by the mayor. So you get mad, you get mad at the mayor, but like, yo, mayor, where my food stamps at? Like, what's going on? You know, you're in the wrong place. So you're talking about 33, you know what I'm saying? 33 years young. You're talking about, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And then um, so if you're not taught these things, then how can you answer the how can you answer the problem? You know what I'm saying? Where to go? Who, you know what I'm saying? Who am supposed to be mad at? Oh, that's a Mark Pullen curse. I need to go talk to him. Yo, Mark, what's up? What's 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 good, son? Like, where where my food stands? Like, I thought I know it's Corona. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's a it's a difference. So um, thank you for sharing that, and I'm glad that you're learning some history that you don't normally uh, learn in school. And that's the power of you know what I'm saying? Seeing heroes that look like us. And that allows us to ask questions that we don't normally think to ask or would ask and things like that. All right, uh, anybody else would like to share on 
uh, what they like about the car. I'm there. I think it's pretty cool because, like Logan said, you don't really learn it in school, but it, it's so in depth that you feel like you're right there watching it all happen. I, I don't really have much else to say. <laughs> Logan and Skyler, the brothers, you know, it feels like right there. See, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's why I like the, the, the writers of this joint because it's so vivid. And like to me, it felt like HD. Like I'm blowing through, I'm like, oh, shoot, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't wait. Now, Sherry, I love the story, but you know what I'm saying? The, the art didn't draw me in like that. So uh, we need that. We need that to hold your attention. So a lot of times, if uh, our children are battling uh, what's on TikTok, whether it's a new dance, or if they're in the sports, if you like, oh shoot, Kevin Durant and Kyrie and James Harden, you know what I'm saying, they got your attention, then I need to give you some education that's exciting that keeps your attention, you know what I'm saying? Because this, this uh, what you're learning is, is so exciting if it's told the right way, if it's presented the right way, you know what I'm saying? Everything that you like. If I go pull up um, a cartoon that you like, you know, so I can give you something in real life that is more compelling and probably more out of this world that you just don't, you wouldn't even imagine. You know what I'm saying? What people are doing. But if it's not presented that way, then you just like, ah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, uh, George Washington, he has some wooden teeth. <laughs> you know, he a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, my man was honorable. He's like, yo, two, two terms, I'm a step back. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Okay. He cut down the tree once. He cut down the tree once. He, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you learn that it's boring. It's like, ah, right. you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? But then if somebody comes to you, you get, you get somebody that's big and powerful and that's com uh, convinced about what he's saying. He's like, yo, how many white people you know got the last name Washington? Now your brain start thinking. You're like, <laughs> yo, I've never seen this before. I don't know any. White people with the last name Washington. Do you? You don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Now make you think. Now you start to rethink history differently. Just get a book, sit there, and regurgitate what you told me. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody. You know what I'm saying? We got ten people. Maybe one of us is actually gonna look it up and be like, "Oh, where did that come from?" Black, 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 black. All right. So. Uh, I want to say, uh, uh, personally, uh, for me, that this, so uh, real quick, young people, look at me in my eyes. Mr. M loves and cares about you. Sorry, 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 that's serious. Fine. <laughs> 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 Mr. M loves and cares about you, but the the environment that you live in, the amount, the sheer amount of information, the sheer amount of entertainment that is racing through your phone, racing through your laptops, and on your TV, it is very hard for caring adults to keep up and to impart in you knowledge that will change your life. Knowledge that will categorically change your life. And so what we're fighting to do here is to try to show you in one way or another, whether it be through the comics, whether it be through an artist that we bring, whether it bring through a musician that we bring, we're trying to show you something to plant some type of seed that will make sure that you live a better life than your father or your mother. It's so hard, we are fighting. And the more that we go through time and the more that we become knowledgeable, the more that, so like back in the 60s, you know what I'm saying? There were women fighting for women's rights, but it wasn't like a national consciousness of women's rights. No hashtags. You know, no hashtags, no Me Too movement. You know what I'm saying? There's no Kamala Harris. You know what I'm saying? There was, you know what I'm saying? Like, so we didn't, we didn't see women 
that were empowered. You didn't see women that were running uh, a Google or Facebook or things like that. And so when you grow up now, you're just like, yo, I just want to make it out. I want to get a job. I want to pick my apartment. Don't settle. What we try to get you to do is not settle. And so when I read these comic books, it gives me a chance to explore through something that is fun, but then I can try to draw something out and be like, yo, here is a lesson. Here is something I didn't know. And then passionate to me, Mr. Impersonally, is a connection that hopefully you can make with your parents or you can make with another adult so that I want you to get to a place where we are not the only adults or your parents or your relatives are not the only adults that you trust or that you learn to build a relationship with. Because if you talk to DQ, talk to James, or talk to my mom, when they grew up, they neighbors, everybody knew each other. Mrs. So-and-so can give you a spanking, and then she's going to tell your mom, then your mom, you know a spanking. Try. If you didn't have no clue, <laughs> they'd be like, yo, go over to the neighbor's house, and then your neighbors will help feed you. When they were trying to break up our families, and, they were, and, the, and the government was coming in, and like, boom, boom, boom. Is there a man in here making any money? They had a telephone chain. They are like, yeah, the government come and tell your husband, get out. Tell your boyfriend, get out. We were protecting each other. We were together. But today, it's like, yo, don't touch my kid. Don't do that. And so what, we're, what I'm trying to build in here is a community so that you see kids that maybe look like you, hopefully don't look like you, and you can start to build a relationship, being authentic, being yourself, and then we can do something different. And so for me, you know what I'm saying? Along with what I get from my different partners who they pull out things that my mind doesn't normally think of it that way. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm when I'm learning about uh, the lack of representation for the LGBTQ community, I don't think about that. I, I have privilege as a male, as a heterosexual, as a cis male, cisgender male. I have a privilege. I don't think about that. So now I get a chance to learn and I get a chance to impart it. So that's what it is for me. Um, you have a hand up? Is that what's that? That up. Okay, John Terry's gonna have So does anybody else want would uh like to share this one? Mom? This is my mom. Same mom. Mrs. M. Same M. Same mama M. Hello, hello. I have really truly enjoyed myself. Uh, each one of you that have spoken, you spoken well. It's a lot of knowledge I'm supporting. Hopefully, you know, just even the internet, I hope someone is really listening, grasp hope to what's being put out there because it's positive, it's, it's helpful, that's that dog. And may you continue to grow. Thank you. Woohoo! Thank you, Mama M. Shout out to Mama M. On the support. That's why I can be who I can be because who she is. Um, yes. Richie wants to jump in. We might yeah. switch. Switch on. All right. Um, I just wanted to give a personal anecdote just about me getting into comic books and what it meant for me growing up. Um, I'm a writer. And growing up with these stories, growing up watching Storm fly up into the, the, the atmosphere and, you know, say this really long, winded, uh, <laughs> powers of the skies, or whatever, whatever. I, lived, I was living for all of that, right? I was like, who is writing these characters? Who's creating these ridiculous uh, 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 lines? And, and who's, you know, that's fun for me to take in, right? And I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to grow up and, and write stories that, that meant something for someone, um, especially when that someone was a young black kid, like myself, right, when I was growing up. And so growing up with other stories like Black Panther and Storm and Static Shock mm -hmm. and, and Blue Cage and the Green Lantern. The black one, not the other one. <laughs> These were important to me. And I wanted to do, I wanted to grow up and do more of them. And I think, in a way, too, a lot of these stories center black joy, black love. And that's what we do kind of like do, right? We highlight black joy and black love and we promote that to the community. And that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do in my work. But getting to this point, I started reading these comics. I started by being, by imagining a future life of Jesus. And now I'm doing it, right? And so this is the power of literacy, right? This is the power of comic books, and this is the power of representation. So that 
really worked for me. And my only hope is that it'll also work for many of you all as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Richard! Woo! Woo! All right, give it up for Richard, give it up for So real quick, we got uh, uh, two parents in the house, and you do not have to answer, but uh, if you would like to share, uh, if you can give one reflection of the comic book that you like yourself, and then one observation that you've seen uh, from your child as they uh, read the comic book or ask questions or uh, uh, any anecdotes that you would like to share. So we start with that. Uh, what did you like from the comic book? And I like to see some okay. for, for myself, um, I think it, it started with a movie for me um, and really seeing representation. You know, that was the biggest thing for me because when I was growing up, there was none. You know, there was no representation anywhere. Um, but to not just see the representation, but to see the representation in a futuristic, empowering, fantastic way that, you know, was unfathomable and unimaginable, you know, for something that would help us to think bigger than just the now, you know, bigger than, you know, the, techn the technology that they had, um, all of that stuff, you know. And I try to impart that. And one of the cool things for me as a parent is like even seeing my boys like like taking in uh, Black Panther is this guy's favorite movie. I mean, I think that's pretty much can I watch my <laughs> <laughs> It's really cool, you know, but to, for whatever reason it is, you know, we love the movies, we love the technology. Um, and then to see, like, um, uh, from the comics, that there's layers of it. You know, all of the stuff that John shared, man, I appreciate that so much, but, like, there's so many layers in there, stuff that you don't see, things that you don't know, you know, um, the, like, even with the balloons from the comics, you know, that's stuff that I genuinely, I didn't know about. It's cool for me as a parent to learn it, but then to impart it on the kids as well, that they take stuff away from that as well. And, and like Logan even shared, it's it's a history and things that are not taught normally. Mm -hmm. So as a parent to be able to see them get it and understand that there's different and better narratives that are out there than just what's shared to us, you know. So nice. Give it up for James, give it up for James. Yes, and uh, you know, shout out to the parents, Jay, Leslie, Mama M. You guys are awesome. Uh, Battle and the Twins, you guys are awesome. Uh, Lindsay, did you want to uh, share? Do you mind sharing? Oh, she has something. Oh, yeah. that's it. Okay, here we go. Can you unmute? Am I good? Yes. Okay. Um, so, my like, comic book for like for a long time. Um, and I think when we found um, Melissa's flash, it was, uh, I thought this was a great way to bring their love to our project of knowing more about the histories of where we come from um, and trying to build a knowledge base that wasn't as centered on white privilege as the books that I was taught when I was a kid. Um, and then when we found Black Panther, then we also realized we could look at um, a future world that was more than we had imagined in the past. And so those have both been really marvelous ways for us to expand what we know of the world and what we need to work to make the world to be. Mm. Tight. All right. Sorry, I was. Oh, I'm still muted. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, <coughs> and giving us your insight. And again, we want to. Hello, Jeremy. Oh, I can't hear myself. Jeremy. No, I don't know if it's the speaker. Is the speaker not working? Uh, Medic. What's going on? Medic. Hello, hello, there, 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 there we go. There we go. All right. Uh, Lindsay, thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, there you go. Y'all can hear me. Okay, there you go. So, uh, thank you again so much uh, for sharing that. Um, and uh, and we really want to uh, express 
as the Wakanda Alliance, and I'm sure there's one for the Literacy Writing Center, the same. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate parents who uh, are so involved in uh, their children's lives. And uh, I've been working in a youth programming for 10 years. And I can tell you, like, of those 10 years, I, I meet probably only like 10% of the parents. If that, probably closer to five percent. The closer I got from 2015 to today, you know. Um, so when we see that, we're just very encouraged, and uh, so we just want to honor you. So uh, shout out, hand claps, and snaps to the parents. Yeah. That do those things, and then uh, okay. So I want to turn to uh, the tribe and just see uh, any personal uh, reflections that you guys want to share. I know you guys, uh, me and myself, and myself and Richie shared. Did you uh, yeah. share? I could jump in. Yeah. yeah. You want me to? Sure. Yeah, you got that? Yeah. $1,300. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> um, yeah, so I kind of just want to talk about how mystical it feels to be part of the tribe and do this work with Wakanda Alliance. Um, as I talked about the rooms earlier, um, I sat in different rooms in Caribbean, John said North America, South America. So I studied Capoeira as, as uh, they call it. So Capoeira is more than just martial arts. It's where they take their spirituality, their ancestry, martial arts, music, dance, song, fun, games. It's all that into one culture. So just like the, the lighting up of things, like it feels beyond me that I can teach about the connected, connectivity between African culture, the diaspora, and this fun thing about putting so much work and sweat into, that we all put work and sweat and so much time into. Um, and so it just kind of reassured me that, that I have a bigger mission outside of this, what I ever, whatever I thought I said I would do. Like photography is no longer the top thing. <laughs> like the kind of life is the top thing. And, and that makes me really happy that I can I can teach Capoeira, I can teach this, this ancestry behind Capoeira, I can teach the ancestry behind comic books and all these other things that I like. And mind you, I haven't been a I've been a long time comic and superhero fan, but I was never really in, as in depth as I was until I saw Black Panther back in back before he right when he got to like the Civil War. Like I knew about him, I had played him in a video game and stuff like that, but I didn't know the core of it. So I went back to like the sixties and went back to the eighties and the nineties. I'm like, this is me. <laughs> this is super dope. And the fact that his legacy is like still expanding. The legacy of Wakanda is still expanding with the movies, the video games, and like the, the whole culture shock that everybody went through. Um, it just all lines up really, really special for me. So um, I just wanted to point that out. So I definitely appreciate y'all being here. Um, we're going to continue to take this thing worldwide. You know what I'm saying? We got people in Africa looking at us, people in Brazil looking at us, people in California, Hawaii. They've all contributed to this project. So um, yeah, I'm just excited for the growth. So I appreciate y'all okay. being here. Love you. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was, I was just reflecting back on uh, with the passing of BMX, um, Marvel Knights, which was a, a run, Christopher Priest run of uh, Black Panther, came out in 1998, and I was maybe 12 or 13 years old, and I remember listening to Nas's "I Am," uh, "It's Dark as Hell It's Hot," and Tupac's Greatest Hits, and just like, just waiting like, every week like to go to the comic book store. Get on a change because the comps was dollar twenty five. So I was running change in the car. I run a change for my whole family, and I couldn't wait um, until Tuesday because Tuesday after school I could go get the next Marvel Knights, which is the, the Christopher Priest one of Black Panther, and listening to Black Panther, <coughs> watching the, the CIA's ass, and you know, you know, battle America while listening to DMX, you know, talking about what he was going through. Uh, was just such a powerful, you know, moment exactly. of, mm -hmm. of yeah, black expression, you know, of black excellence, black joy, black rage. Um, and I just have a lot of flashbacks as as I process, um, you know, the death of DMX or just like how how all those things came together. And that's really where Black Panther was introduced to me. Um, and it was so amazing to to have examples of blackness that I identified with because I love Biggie, right? I did, but and I and I wanted to, I, I wished. Cause I was a big dude. I was like, I want to be Biggie. But I didn't <laughs> believe that. I really believe like when X was like, like talking about the nothingness and just like the emptiness that he was feeling, and then to have 
those lows be able to be like, but I could be T'Challa too. Uh, really, it was just a beautiful, a beautiful moment for me and a lot of part of who I was. And I appreciate my mother for, she edited a lot of what I saw, but when it came to like, she was like, you know what? This BMX stuff is explicit, but there is a message in this. Oh, this Black Panther? Wait a minute, this dude is messing up the CIA and he taking back Africa? Now you can read this, you know what I mean? And I definitely have to just shout out and appreciate um, the, the intergenerational spirit of when we acknowledge the newness of what our young folks are bringing to us and embrace it. Um, to me, that's what this is all about. That's what the power is at. And I guess I'm realizing in many ways, I'm trying to give everybody this generation what I got in 1998 when I was had my headphones and my batteries <laughs> walking to the comic book shop, you know, bumping DMX, waiting for that next Marvel night so I could see what Black Panther was going to do to every loss. Nice. Oh, DQ on the mic? Yeah, DQ, yeah, boy, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. So, Linda, if you can look at the screen, we want to send you this, uh, Miles, we want to send you this Black yeah. Panther Walking the Dark. So, yeah, if you can send us an email, we will, I'll make sure I get it mailed to you. And uh, get it right to your house. Oh, right. perfect. It's tough it. right there. All right, so, uh, thank you so much, uh, DQ. Uh, DQ, I know you don't talk much, but do you want to share what? This run meant to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> this run was to me uh, something that was needed. I'm glad it happened because now it opens up doors for more different writers to come in to Marvel and explore and expand the universe. And again, to me, Afrofuturism is the ultimate freedom. Um, for an exploration for black people, so in their imagination. So this is a great book, I love it, I'm glad it happened because if it didn't happen, I don't think we would have a kind of alliance. Mm -hmm. so, True that. Uh, to Coates for, you know, doing it. Ooh, you know? Ooh. So that's it. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. Hold on, wait a minute. Right, so, uh, we're about to wind down. And uh, so I want to say um, thank you for Just Buffalo Literacy Writing Center for giving us this uh, opportunity to uh, co-host this event and uh, to share what we do. We do this on a bi-monthly uh, basis, bi-weekly. Bi-weekly bi basis every second and fourth uh, Saturday of the month. So Lindsay... Uh, Miles in the chat, I put uh, our website, thegalactictribe.org, and I put our Facebook, uh, Wakanda Alliance, uh, Facebook at Wakanda Alliance. So if you are tuned into those two, uh, that website and that social media page, then you will be up to date on what we're doing. So April 24th, I got it right. Yeah. April 24th, uh, I, Lindsay, I normally get it wrong. So I'll be, I'll be convinced though. I'll be a lot of confidence behind what I'm saying, but I got it right today. April 24th, uh, 12 to 2.30 is our is our normal time. Uh, we'll be back here. It's actually going to be, uh, uh, it's kind of a special workshop. Uh, April 22nd is Earth Day. Uh, we have a special guest, one of our uh, tribe members, uh, uh, Gio. She is a climate activist for New York Renews. And um, so we care about the earth. Um, she's going to have a dope presentation. I believe we're going to be having a special comic book with Storm in it. Um, but all of that, will, you'll see a flyer coming out. So please connect with us on our website. Connect with us on social media. I have your email. So I will, uh, Miles, I'm sending that book to you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we want to say thank you as the uh, Galactic Tribe and the Wakanda Alliance program. Uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates, uh, we want to thank you for uh, uh, for writing this, for writing this run, for opening doors for uh, Black women and Black writers, uh, for giving us this opportunity to share with young people. Um, if you happen to see this, then, um, you know, from the from the bottom of our hearts, we really want to thank you. And then, um, Ann, you my main man. Oh, I'm gonna make an announcement. yes, Rich is going to make an announcement. True. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm gonna turn this way. <laughs> so I'm a program assistant and teaching artist with Just Buffalo, and I just want to announce that we do have free writing workshops. So if you're a writer, I'll snap. We have free writing workshops on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm a writer. From 4:30 to 6. 
So if you were to go on our website, it's justbuffalo.org, uh, we feature different teaching artists every Tuesday. So like last week we had a songwriting workshop. The week before we wrote about um, climate and climate change. So it's always different teaching artists. So if you're a writer, go on our website, check out all the, uh, the workshops we have coming up. And we also have Tana Hissy Coats uh, event coming up on April 22nd as well. Ooh, ooh, and so yeah. we uh, recorded an event with Tana Hissy Coats. We talked to him, we asked him some questions that people from the community had, and we'll be airing that on April 22nd. So if you go on the website again, justbuffalo.org, you can see all the information uh, to buy a ticket, or we also have scholarships available. So if you can't afford the ticket, um, you just uh, you would just need to send an email to get a scholarship, to get a link, to be able to view that event as well. So thank you all for coming. Yeah. Woo woo. Uh, and anything? Are we good? Uh, yeah, now we're good. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I, th I think we got it. All right, so again, <laughs> we love y'all from the bottom of and our nice. hearts. Jay, Logan, Skyler, Tari, Dontarius, Lindsay, Miles, welcome to the family. Wait, I'll say we'll get you that book soon. We hope y'all have an amazing Saturday. I hope that you have a restorative Sunday and that we gear up ready to go for Monday. I know uh, spring break is ending for Buffalo Public, so they got to go back. You know what I'm saying? I'm get that knowledge. You know what I'm saying? It's not what kind of lines, but you know, we got to do it. <laughs> and y'all have a great day. Woo! Ooh, yeah!